Hi, Danny from FST Fitness. Um, so we have a question in from Simon, uh, and Simon asks, uh, I'm getting back into weight training, um, deadlift squats, etc. What are your key pointers for good form when performing these moves? This is, this is specifically when using relatively heavy weights, heavier weights. And what's the best way for a hard gainer to bulk up? Uh, right, so first of all, there's a couple of questions within that. So, um, well, I can kind of break it down into two. We're gonna, we've, we've, got a, we've got a little bit of a technique question and then sort of like building muscle question. So, technique question first. So, regardless of whether you're lifting heavy or whether it is you're lifting light, your technique really should stay the same. If you are getting really, really up towards your max, um, so you're kind of like lifting around the 90, 95, 100% really eyeballs out sort of lifting, then if I'm honest, I would expect technique just to sort of like waver a little bit. It's, it's, you, you're working hard. I mean, you can't, you can't, it can't be perfect. Um, there's going to be little bits, but you want to try and keep it as strict and as nice and as clean as possible. Um, you know, so so that's one thing. If you are getting any sort of pain, which maybe of like maybe that's why you stopped and why you're getting back into weight training, you're a little bit concerned about your technique, that's kind of where I'm assuming you're kind of coming from. Um, so, so yeah, I, I would probably think about this, okay? So, when, I'm, when I get someone in and they're sort of like in the training uh, and they're lifting sort of squats, deadlift specifically and stuff like that, then you know, and they're starting to get a little bit of discomfort, it's starting to, you, you know, things should, should be working a little bit harder than they should be working. I kind of strip it right back down to, to, to nothing again. Um, so, and it can usually get boiled down to like a couple of things, but without actually seeing you here, squatting and deadlifting right in front of me, and discussing it, it's, it's really hard for me to give you like a really pinpoint answer. So what I'll do is I'll just, tr I'll, I'll tell you what I would, Assume is going to be the, what I assume is, would be the issue. Um, the first thing I'd say is really work on your uh, your your ability to brace. Okay, so what I mean this is is it utilizing your intra-abdominal pressure uh, to help stabilize the spine and the pelvis. So what I mean by this is is we want to try and engage your uh, so we want to engage your pelvic floor. And then basically imagine you've got a belt around your waist and you really want to press against that, okay? And then to increase that, what you want to do is take a massive, deep lung full of air, okay? So not like a deep uh, lung full of air where your shoulders raise up, it's to really expand the chest, really use your diaphragm. It takes a little bit of practice this, but it's definitely worth sticking with. And then basically what you want to do then is, is create as much pressure as possible as you can for your abdominals, okay? So what that does, it just helps support your spine and it also helps support your pelvic, uh, it also helps support your pelvis. The reason why we need this, the reason why we need to do this is where a lot of people when they when they are squatting, when they're deadlifting, they are using their back to extend, okay, to lift the weight if you like. Um, and your back doesn't really do that. It's 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 there, uh, you know, it's it's there to support your spine. It's it's you know, people overuse their spinal erectors and that's kind of where they get the aches up and down the, uh, uh, you know, up and down the spine. The clues of the title really, spinal, spinal rectus, they support your spine, but, you're, but they need help, okay? And that help comes from the other end of the spectrum, which is your abdominals, which, you know, a lot of people think they're just there to look good, and they're not, they're actually, you know, they're there as a, as a, as a muscle to help stabilize the torso, that's what they're there for. So you wanna give them as much help as possible. So by increasing that, intra, by, by taking that deep breath in and bracing and creating that intra-abdominal pressure, you're really helping support the spine which should help go towards uh, you know, um, any sort of aches or pains that you kind of get in the lower back. Um, the other thing that I'll probably suggest that you do is make sure that you are extending through the hips. So what I mean by this is, again, as, just, as I've just mentioned, is when you lift a weight, a lot, what a lot of people do is they will use their back to extend their hips and not the hip extensors, which are the glutes and the hamstrings. Um, so what I would probably suggest is, is if you're getting back into weightlifting, make sure that it's your glutes and your hamstrings extending your hips and not your back, okay? So when you're sort of like, when you flex down to lift up your weight or you've got your uh, barbell on your back and you're gonna go and squat, when you, when, you, when you reduce that hip angle, that's hip flexion, your glutes and hamstrings should extend. If they aren't really doing it, 
then you might need to start looking at sort of like some glute activation work, some hamstring activation work before you even do it. Um, and then if you really want to focus on form, I would just literally just bin the weight right now, just for, just for a few weeks, maybe four weeks, and just do goblet squats and deadlifting with a kettlebell and just really focus on extending through the glutes and creating that intra-abdominal pressure. And just th think of lifting weights as a skill rather than just, I need to lift some weights. Uh, if you focus on it as a skill, and it's a skilled movement, which it kind of is, then that needs practice, practice, practice to get the form correct. And there's nothing wrong with that, and it might take a while. I know it's not the thing to do in the gym, but trust me, it is, it is definitely, definitely, definitely worth just giving yourself some time, really, really learning how to extend through the glutes, create that intra-abdominal intra pressure, and, and, and learning the form, and, and crafting that form, and crafting that movement out well. Um, if you're not sure, get yourself a coach that, that you know, and that can help you with that. Uh, failing that, if you're ever in Manchester or you're close to Manchester, close to the gym, um, then by all means come down. Well, let me know actually first, uh, and then co come down, and I'm more than happy to spend some time with you and make sure that you're getting that dialed in. Uh, anyone that wants to get into weightlifting, I've always got time for and and uh, and point in the right direction. So I'm more than happy to help out. So there we go. Next thing, um, what is the best? way for hard gains to bulk up. So the first thing I'd say to that is, what are you bulking up for specifically? You, you know, are you just wanting to put on mass, just huge size? If so, what for? You know, if it's for an aesthetic pur purpose, you're just kind of going to look big. If you need to play for a sport, then, you know, is it for impact? Do you, do you play rugby or whatever it is? So whatever it is you want to put, a re put, whatever it is that you want to do that for, what is the reason for it, okay? Them sort of questions, usually, when people say that I want to put, I want to bulk up or something like this, they kind of have like this idea of who it is in mind. Um, the issue with that is you, you're looking at someone that's got a completely different DNA, they've got a completely different physiology and we respond to exercise in a completely different way that you do. So it's, quite, it's not really a straightforward answer, really. And, and to be honest with you, you know, it's, I would really worry, I would really think about putting on as much muscle as you can, okay? Not as much muscle as I can, the person next to you or the magazine you're looking at, how much muscle you can personally put on. Once you kind of like remove the external uh, stimulus in terms of magazines, other people around you and, and you know, whatever, then you're kind of free to put on so to be become the best version of you, really, and just sort of like, I'm, I'm really put on as much muscle as you possibly can. Um, and, and in order to do that, then it's fairly straightforward. You just basically think of three to four exercises per muscle group of uh, five to six sets of six to eight reps. Keep the weight heavy and keep the, uh, keep the rest short. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's a good place to start. I mean, I'm not saying that's the golden rule. I'm not saying that's that's the be all and end all. I'm not saying that's the, uh, the the program that everyone should do. But it's a good place to start if you want to do that. Before I even before you even do that, though, I would I would maybe focus on developing your your foundational strength on squats and deadlift because then we then you can get your your training volume higher. Uh, volume is sets times reps times weight. Uh, that's your training volume, and then per exercise and add it all up and you figure out how much volume you've done. Uh, and, and part of that is adding sets, adding reps, uh, and also increasing uh, increasing the weight. So if you can increase your maximal strength, then therefore you can also increase your uh, your percentages and your volume and therefore increase the, 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 the volume of that, that, that you're lifting. Um, but rather than, for me, I like to split my, uh, if I was to train like this, I would like to split it up in, in a couple of different, uh, in, in this way. I think about pushing exercises, pulling exercises, and hip dominant exercises. I'm not really one for sort of like spending a whole session just doing arms. Uh, I personally, I, I, it bores me to tears. I couldn't think of anything worse. Uh, I, I really would really rather not do it. It's just not very exciting. You're not really going to get anything out of it in terms of metabolically. Um, keep it big, keep it compound, split it up, push, pull, hip dominant. Um, focus on your trunk as well. You can throw that in right at the end with a, maybe a little bit of metabolic resistance training. Um, but in theory, you should be able to get the, the bulk, the workout bit, uh, your five to six sets and your six to six reps of your three to four exercises. You should, if you're working hard, get it in in 45 minutes. 
you can do it. That is head, that, that is head down, headphones in, get cracking, ignore people, not having a chat, conversation can wait to the end, get on with it, and you get it done in 45 minutes. That's kind of how I'd go about it. So for example, a hip dominant day might be deadlifts, front squats, lunges with the sets and rep ranges that I've just said. Then you might just think about, I'm gonna finish off with a kettlebell, uh, metabolic resistance training, little circuit, and that might last seven or eight minutes. You're gonna get all that nice and done. You're gonna get that all squared away in 60 minutes, no problem, and to be honest with you, if you do that three to four sessions a week, if you could do five, that'd be great. Uh, then you're really gonna put, then you will put on, ultimately, you know, put on some muscle, uh, assuming that your nutrition and your calorific intake is, is up to speed. Uh, again, the offer's there. If you want to come down and we can have a chat and, you know, I can, I can, uh, I can help you out, that's, that's not a problem. Um, all you got to do is just let me know and, uh, and, and come down and, and that's it. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully that's answered your questions. Question, sorry. Uh, hope that, hopefully that's answered your question. Um, yeah, and I'll be answering another question next week. Um, and if you have any other questions for me, uh, I'm more than happy to answer, then just go onto the website, fstfitness.com. Um, there's a contact form on there. Just fill it in and put in the subject line, Ask Dan. Uh, that'll come to me and then, yeah, and then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll answer them, okay? And that's, and that's pretty much it. Failing that, just put it in the comments, um, either on YouTube or on Facebook where I'm gonna post this. Uh, put it in the comments and, I, and, I'll, and I'll pick it up and I'm going to go through these once a week uh, and then hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys are going to get some good, good results. Okay, thank you.